Welcome back to the weekend show. Our topic of discussion today is the assessment of President Buhari's ministerial list. The ministerial list is finally here. Hallelujah. Almost two months after he was sworn in for a second term in office, the president submitted the long-awaited list to the Senate for confirmation. Throughout the week, the Senate was um, screening all 43 nominees. Uh, some have been t told to take a bow, while the others were grilled and asked very uh, pertinent questions. Joining us on today's program to discuss this issue, we have... We have with us a lawyer and politician, um, Frank Faga Utor. Um, welcome to the weekend show. Yeah, thank you very much, Andy. Thank well you also welcome viewers. <laughs> We also have with us Reverend Barrister Sally William Chinedu, PhD, co-founder, Friends of Muhammadu Bihari, and she's also a philanthropist. Thank Welcome you very show. much. Immediate Passat is the now woman that APC, the heart of Nigeria. Oh, great. <laughs> so we are going to speak for the women today. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, we also have with us Dr. Mwegbe Kenna, who is um, former technical assistant to the Honorable Minister of State in foreign, of foreign Affairs and also to a former Honorable Minister of State for Education. Welcome to the weekend. Thank you very on. much. Reverend Sally, let, mm? me <laughs> 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 let me start with you. Please. Um, I always enjoy having you on this program because you speak so passionately about your party, the All Progressives Congress. Um, yet, we see an abysmal performance of women on the nomination list of ministers. How come someone like yourself, who is qualified, wasn't nominated as one of the women out of the 43 candidates? Might I add, we only have seven nominees out of the 43 candidates. Only seven women were identified as uh, quality, qualifiable to um, be nominated on President Buhari's, Buhari's ministerial list. So why weren't you one of those women? And why didn't you advise your candidate at the time to ensure more inclusion of women in his cabinet? <laughs> thank you so much, <laughs> my younger sister. And thank you, Nigerians. First and foremost, Mr. President, I thank you for giving us the opportunity that to have my own candidate on board, Dr. Samson Uchechuku Oga. He is my candidate. He was my presidential governorship candidate. So I'm glad that somebody is, someone like Uchoga is there. That is one. And then back to the issue of women. Of course, I'm not very pleased that there are very few women this time around. But some, I believe that my president is going to make amend. How will you make the amend? There are several other positions. L listen to me, my Nigerians and my sister. Everybody cannot be a minister. Let us be honest about it. How many ministries do we have in Nigeria? How many positions are there? Every one of us cannot just be in, in the position of ministerial list. It's not possible. It's completely impossible. So if we're having 43, uh, 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 of course, we should have had like 20 or 15 women. But if that is how Mr. President wanted, I can question him because that is his prerogative. But we were, we already campaigned. Her Excellency, the First Lady, had believed that more women will be on board this time around. But like I said earlier, there are many positions coming up. Women could still go on ambassador. If you're an ambassador to Israel or to South Africa or to America, you're representing your country. If you're the president of Nigeria in that country. If you're in charge of some of these uh, 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 SDGs, uh, 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 parasitos, there, there are positions available. I know that Mr. President will compensate women using other platforms. Thank you. Barista, so, so this is the first issue that the word compensation is being used when we are talking about running a country. And Governance. Barista Frank, I knew you when you were a youth politician as a student. Right. We have a list with, and this is how clear it is, 10 former governors who have been governors as civilians or military administrators. We have 14 ministers returning. Zero young people. The youngest person on that list is 44, which is even an improvement because the last time it was 49. But the youngest person is 44. So APC primaries for President Buhari, about 15 to 20 million people say this is who we want. But every single person, including a, a, a legislator who made the list, is recycled. So 42 names, all of them out of 200 million people, out of 20 million people who say this is who we want. 
are Nigerians finishing? <laughs> like, <laughs> what exactly is going on? How do you feel about the choice of people, especially when it comes to the fact that the word compensation is being used when we are talking about developing a nation? Uh, thank you very much. I think that is one of the trademarks of the APC government that we're running right now, that uh, she's more interested in patronizing uh, her faithfuls rather than, of course, getting the best brands to develop this nation. We have an example in Africa, the exemplary leadership of um, Paul Kagame. That is, that is a, a, the best case study in good leadership in Africa as we stand right now. And if you go to, if you check Paul Kagame's government, for instance, Fifty-two percent of the government is made up of the cabinet is made up of women. Uh, out of out of out of the twenty-six ministers, about seventeen, about seventeen are women in Paul Kagame's government. And of course, he mixed he mixed the old and the young generation. You have uh, John Uhiwanga, a minister who is just thirty-one years old, who is handling the ICT. We know that young men are more into ICT than than, than the aged. And so it's very quite disheartening that uh, after waiting for about 50-something days, we're coming up with a list of the same names we've known over and over, the same names that have been in the political climb of Nigeria right from 1999. Uh, this, year, this year is 20 years of the inception of this democracy. So people were, who were born in 1999 were, were, were qualified to vote this year. And since when they were born, these were the names that were reigning over and over in the country. And so like Obama would say, if we continue to play the same kind of politics with the same kind of players, we expect the same result. And so there's nothing quite interesting in what is happening, 50, 54 days of waiting. Uh, these are people that ordinarily, if it is these same names we are seeing, uh, he should have given, he should have sent the, the names right away to the Senate on the first day of uh, the inauguration of the Senate. He should have used the period of transition that is between the election of the presidency and the inauguration to get up this name. But after waiting, we are still seeing the same people. But that does not, I am, I'm not taking away the, the truth in the fact that there are one or two people who quite impressed me. Like the Isa Pantami, that young man from uh, Gombe. Yeah, and the, the man in it. I was quite impressed with his uh, presentation. I, again, sorry, le, le, maybe you, you never asked of this, but let me go in into this. Uh, we expected the Senate to properly scrutinize these people, but what happened was just a stretch of banters. Somebody t standing up to say he knows him for so long, he's good, so he should take a bow and go. For goodness sake, the Federal Executive Council the, uh, is the life wire of the government of the Federation. It's the engine room. So the people that will man the offices in the, in the Federal Executive should be scrutinized properly. Let's know what is their idea. What is their intention? What are they going to do? Let's also ask them. And again, I, I, I wish anyway that the, 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 the president sent the list with the portfolio mm -hmm. of the so that they will be properly scrutinized. I think we've, we will pass this age where we will just send names and then be asking them generic questions. Mm. Mr. Frank, I completely agree with you. I said to someone when I was watching the screening on NTA that where are the portfolios for these nominees? You yes. can't just send a name to the Senate for screening with no portfolio. I believe that the people who have experiences in specific sectors, specific fields, should be giving the portfolio for that. But mm -hmm. the Senate cannot adequately do its job without yeah, actually having a portfolio attached side, to yeah. the name. So, uh, Ikeda, let me bring you in here. How do we fix the system? Because that's the issue here. Mm -hmm. The fact that the Constitution doesn't demand that, that a portfolio is sent with the name. So how that do we issue. fix that system to ensure that uh, people who are experts in setting fields are attached to their correct portfolio. Medical doctors are appointed as ministers. Uh, lawyers are um, appointed as AGF. So how do we fix that? I, feel, yeah. I believe that's the beginning I of this conversation. Yeah, I agree with you. Like Chris Ngige, medical doctors are appointed as the Minister of Labor. But unfortunately, the politics we play in Nigeria is winner takes all. So the president has his prerogative to appoint anybody he wishes to appoint to any position. I mean, it's clear. But it's, there's still a moral duty. Now, the moral duty is that we should do the right thing, which is why portfolio should be assigned, so that the questions can be tabled efficiently. I mean, you can see some, someone like Kuchoga was asked questions on everything, the banking and finance, power, petroleum. petroleum. So where do it's you place? Because gas. oil, yeah, because he's an oil and, and gas an man. He was, a, he was a banker. So we need those portfolios so that the questions should be streamlined. <laughs> but I want to work, work, run some quick numbers with you. Um, this is the highest number of ministers that have been appointed in Nigeria, 43. 
you have to question that because by just one. Yeah, eh? the, the last, the last, it was, it was 42, 42, and it yes, was a big problem one. because, let's be honest, Nigeria cannot afford to take care of 43 ministers. Every indices data is showing that because of the dwindling oil revenue, we cannot take care of 42 bureaucrats. It's impossible. Why do we need 43 ministers at this time? There's even an extra one. Why do we need 43 ministers? It's just too much. Let's be honest. So what's going to happen? So if you look at the ministries, like um, Reverend said, they have to break down the ministries to compensate everybody. As far as I'm concerned, the president has put himself in a tight fix. You have former governors. You have former senators. You have former ministers. How are you going to compensate them in quotes? Will you send someone like a senator to, as a minister of state? So those are the, those, that's why your question is very relevant. They should assign portfolios. They even know what we are doing. There are five people that are over 70. A former governor, there's ma Major General Baoshi from Kanu, who was a military ambassador in 1990 to 92. There's another man from Kanu who is 72. So Kanu State alone has two septuagenarians, people over 70. Is the president really thinking about performance? Because, I mean, I'm not saying somebody over 70 can't perform, but come on, you can't compare with somebody that is 46, like Issa Pantami. Times have changed. We should find a way to rejig how we appoint ministers. I expected the president to assign, but because it was a big complaint the last time. Then we spoke, we spoke about women. There were six women in his first cabinet. There are seven women now, but there are actually seven more ministers. In 2015, he appointed 36. This time he's appointing 43. Is he giving way to political idiosyncrasies? There are even more politicians on this list, for example. I mean... I can I, but so to counter some things you've said, we are catering to over 500 legislators. Mm -hmm. So why is 43 too much? That's the number. We'll just, just to come to that. But Reverend Sally, now one of the major problems with President Buhari's um, tenure in 2015 to 2019 was said to be inclusion and exclusion. And so we want to believe he has taken that step to include more people by increasing the numbers so that besides the states, regions are also covered. And he said that in his first, his last time, he didn't know some of the people who were there. So you come to the ministries, you have palm sex and directors who are the technocrats. Like I said, there are a lot of politicians here. This argument about politicians versus technocrats, where does that stand in the place of getting ministers who would actually do the work? I don't completely agree that we have more politicians than technocrats. Okay. He also, he, my brother here, I didn't even know he's Igbo man. He's Ikenna. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know the meaning of Ikenna. <laughs> he mentioned Uchoga. Yeah. Uchoga is a politician. Uchoga is a technocrat. Uchoga is a, in oil and gas, a successful business young man. My brother, my younger one is less than 50 years. I'm younger than him. He's less than 50 years. Uchoga was a banker and a very reputable one for that matter. So is it really a politician or is it? There's also Barista Sharon Nikazo. Of, of, I'm going to talk about her, Barista Sharon Nikazo. And even uh, uh, Paul and Tallinn, a former deputy governor, a former minister. No, 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 no. It's not just, uh, Paul and Tallinn started from nowhere. She was a grassroots woman developer. She developed women in her state. I know her too good. You also know my own sister, my younger one, the, uh, 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 T Tijani. Tijani is not just a politician. She's a town planner, a well-known, renowned town planner. That lady, that small girl you're seeing there, she's a minister today. So what am I saying? We don't just have politicians, my dear brothers and sisters. We have technocrats. We have people that are seasoned. We, are, we say, Mr. President, you go slow, you, are, you don't have so many persons. Now he has a reasonable number of persons. I remember, I cannot say precisely what number. In the first term of uh, the former president, uh, General Lushegu, Mr. President Lushegu Abbasanjo, I think there were about 60 or more ministers in this government, in Nigeria. It happened. It there are more than 40. In this government, you well, I, I see you it's, it's not say. true. No. The, <laughs> the highest number appointed by the president was well, Lord Jonathan. He appointed 42. Yeah. Uh, 42. So you have extra one. Go and check, check the record very, very well. No, now, we are now saying, Mr. President, you are, let me tell you, the last one, there are so many ministers, and they were not even APC members. All of us suffered it. They said they are technocrats. We didn't have anything to do with them. But now that he had decided to increase the number, we are still saying 
that Buhari is wrong. What do we do in Nigeria for us to be? It's a question I asked before. first. What do we do in this country so that you can be right? Ha, look, let, let, no, let, so, 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 I'm so, going just, to let you just, speak, just, but just, I want to ask something. Let me something. say something before I forget <laughs> okay. it. I want to pray to Nigerians. I want, I'm praying to Nigeria. I'm praying to you. I'm praying to my brother. Yes. You. Let us and find us a way. Uh, no, <laughs> let, no, she said. No. Let, let me say something. I want us to really be very... We have more issues in this country of course. than issue of who is appointed, who is unappointed. My prayer yes. is that Nigeria moves forward. Of course. And I want every Nigerian to begin to think what we can do to move forward. I talk about youth. Our youth, yes, I agree. They are, we don't have many youth in the government, or we don't even we have don't any, have if at all. No, yeah. excuse me, if we don't. But also, let me, there is a program I wanted to come earlier, the, the, when the, uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel called me. Is it, there is a way Nigerian younger youth behave that is very irritating. There are so most of them that they don't resume fast. They don't think on the proper line. But, but I think that's Am a I wrong right? wide generalization. Uh, uh, sorry, generalization? Sorry, so so I'll come to, uh, we'll come to that, but just to address certain things. Mm. You said some ministers failed in the last term. You had four years as a president. What stopped the cabinet reshuffle? So if Mr. President has that will to actually make things work, you appointed them, you can fire them. We do that in our businesses. You fire people in your businesses. And then the topic about young people. Several promises were made, not too young to run, bill was put in place. Uh, in, in, sorry, sorry, sorry Ma, just, mm. just, just to come to that. But you've even seen, even in the National Assembly, the Senate President and the House of Representatives, they've, elect, they've appointed young people to work because they knew how these people contributed during the electoral um, process. So coming to make a general, a sweeping generalization. Can I give you an answer to, can I give you answer to that? It, These ministers are also going to work with young people. I can bet my head for that. But they the are going to pick up the, the, the younger ones that will help them run their offices. But they were at the same age, they, these young people are when they first had their first appointments. Exactly. All of them going to power at, at, at their 30s. Yes. National Your Youth Policy has reduced the age of youth to 30 from 35. I still maintain, I still maintain, I still maintain one, sim one simple fact. And uh, what is that one simple fact? Can we find a way to run this government effectively than going back to old issues. Because old issues, of course, I, I agree with the fact that you need to you need the old thing to get to the new one. But 99% of the time, I've come to accept the fact that the old thing is not giving way to new things. We need new things in this country. We need to move Nigeria forward. There are too many things that are trying to divide but us. We are and that's the what old is giving things me concern. Still the, 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 the minister, no matter their age, a lot yes. of them are well seasoned. They can reason very fast. Watch and see how the, the, the fast development we are going That's to see. Marissa Franklin, you. <laughs> you know I love having Reverend. I actually just love to but watch I, that. I, 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 let, me, let me bring can in, I say something, something. before you do, let me bring in uh, Marissa Franklin. You heard Reverend Sally say that we need to pray our way <laughs> <laughs> to development. <laughs> that young people, our issue with young people is that they're not quick to reason. And we are overly criticizing the Mohamedou administration um, instead of giving him credit. But she failed to recognize that there is no development with strictly prayers. I know you are a reverend, <laughs> but we, can, we cannot pray our way to development. The reason we're scrutinizing the ministerial list is because those are the people who would actually implement the policies of the government. And not the policies and without, and like without, the last women, four years. <laughs> without women, without youth in your cabinet, you're going to have a very big issue with coming by with coming up with sensible policies that affects the general populace. If half of the world's population is made up of women, um, over what is seventy percent now there are youth in Africa. How would you come up with policies that affects them with the exclusion of them in the cabinet? So, Barrister Frank, how do we respond to this? Yes, uh, <laughs> my, I quite appreciate the position of my learned senior here. <laughs> uh, you can give it to her because she's APC and she's doing a very good work of defending the APC <laughs> government. <laughs> um, uh, they say, it is said that you cannot decide for us without us. Mm -hmm. It's quite yeah. a very popular Say. Uh, saying. You cannot decide for us without us. And um, look at look at the government of um, of Boris Johnson. He just put up his cabinet just barely 24 hours later. He made up of quite a number of young people. Matt Hancock, the Secretary hours. of uh, Health, uh, Cindy Simmons at 32. You know, this this is the kind of thing where you want. You cannot decide for us at all times. Okay, she's saying 
Yes, the ministers will get quite a number of you to work under them. Yeah, to some extent, very true. But what, what we're saying is the FEC itself needs youth inside to partake in, in, to partake in the decision-making that affects this country. Mm -hmm. well, we don't want young people to stay at the back, background only to work with the minister. We need quite a handful of young people in the Federal Executive Council meeting. To decide because it's an advisory body and it's the engine room of the government of Nigeria. You see, uh, I, I was mentioning some, some countries earlier. Like United States, I followed, I participated very vehemently in the Obama campaign of 2007, 2008. Out of the staff of the Obama campaign organization, 2008, only two people were made secretaries in, 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 uh, when Obama was sworn in. Only two people were made secretaries, Eric Holder, the Attorney General, General of, of, of U.S., and Jenny Prigza, the yeah. Secretary of Commerce. Yes. Every other person went back to their businesses. But you see, in Nigeria, for the fact that you contributed, they have to patronize you. They say you must be involved. There are a lot of other places. The president can patronize these people by giving them contracts, by taking them elsewhere. Get people, people who are quite knowledgeable, who are quite hmm, high. I have a problem with that. You, you are now talking about the nepotism that we've been preaching against for the past four years. So Which why should the president compensate with contracts. politicians with contracts without going through any due process because he's friends with them and because they helped him that they should, he should give them contract because I don't agree with that. That's uh, why, um, yeah. We, 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 whether we agree publicly or not, we know that that's what's going on, what's been happening in this country. We know that most of the contracts have been given <laughs> At every point so in time. should we just be just, should we accept that ways. as the normal or do we ways. try and there are change many that? Ways. There are many, this may be a way as long as your company is qualified well, f well we, there are lots of processes to follow to bring out a qualified company as long as you are Nigerian and you are involved you should be given but that's Mr. Mm. Sally's mm. argument. They are all qualified. Yes. So they're they qualified. qualified. Th th there's a distinction. <laughs> <laughs> are they qualified? Are yes. They, are but are they the only ones? But there is another issue, please, if you don't mind. Let's 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 yeah, <laughs> let, yeah, let's bring Ikena in. Ikena, Barista Frank has said something very controversial. Fundament controversial and fundamental here. We know the business is to compensate your supporters with appointments, contracts, ETC. Mm. But this is the nepotism we're trying to fight in this country. And I believe that in preferring solutions, we must talk about fundamental issues, systemic issues. We've built a system that is skewed against the general public, that is skewed against the poor, that is skewed against the unconnected. So how do we fix that system in order for better governance to thrive in Nigeria? Okay, as I said earlier, I told you that the politics we practice in Nigeria is the winner takes all. So we have to look at the main issue. Let's look at the constitution. The constitution stipulates that you must have one minister per state. So that's 36 ministers already. Does Nigeria need 36 ministers? Those are the issues we should look at. We should go back, maybe adjust the constitution and take us back to the regional government so that we can have, there can be less dependency on the federal. Because that's what causes all these things. People want, people lose elections. I mean, I don't support the idea of losing an election and you're compensated. It is totally wrong. You, it's winner takes, you, you, they mustn't compensate you. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with people that are coming back, but I don't support the idea of, I mean, look at George Akuma, senator. He has been a governor. He has been in government for 20 years. How old was he when he became governor of Benue State? That's your home state. Mm -hmm. oh, maybe 35? So 20 years he has been in, probably the same thing. But as, I mean, 20 years in government, and you still want to come back, give other people a chance, because at that same age, people gave you a chance. So that's what we are talking about. Let's look at those issues. At amend the constitution. We don't need 36 ministers. Then we can start from there. I can understand how, pat how the system patronizes politicians. She said which your guy is a technocrat. I have no problem with him. But three years ago, have you forgotten that he was in the PDP? He won an appeal court case against the present governor, and he was to be sworn in, and eventually lost the case at the Supreme Court. So politics of no ideals. Today you're in PDP, tomorrow you're in APC, next minute you're in AMPP. So I can't say sit here and shout about party politics. There's nothing called party politics. There's nothing called party ideology. All and one but the same. So in choosing your cabinet, you need to get the right people. The Reverend doesn't understand what a minister does. Let me give you, I worked as a minister for four years. Four years from 2011 to 2015. A minister is like a, poli is a politician who unfortunately joins the system and becomes a bureaucrat. So he even forgets his political answers because he has the work to do. He has to drive the policy of government. You can't drive the policy of government if all you think about is politics. You will fail. 
So you are now you are now shielded by the government rules. You come and find out that your DTA a day is thirty six thousand. Maybe when you are governor like a baby, you can take one million naira. And you don't you don't complain. Find out you cannot pay for your hotel bill in Hilton because the government, the bureaucratic system is going to affect you. This is what we are talking about. We have to look for people that want to work, not people coming to do politics, not people having an eye to contest election in 2023. We want people that will wake up and say, look, how do we move the bad indices affecting Nigeria forward? How do we make sure our GDP grows? How do we make sure that poverty is stopped? Nigeria is, so those are, the, those are the issues that I want to discuss. I don't want to discuss why people like uh, Apabio is coming back to become a minister, why people like Raouf Arab Shola who performed to me, in my opinion, poorly in the state, owed salaries for months, and is compensated as a minister? No, we can't, be, we can't encourage such things. We cannot. Nigeria has to move forward. You've checked people's histories. They didn't do well. Ari Fosara did not do well as a governor. He shouldn't in come back. Opinion. He, in my opinion, <laughs> he shouldn't opinion. come. He didn't do well. The indices are there. In, data does not lie. That's one thing we should all know. Data doesn't lie. Nigeria is on the red thread of all the bad indices. So that's why I still question why we need 43 ministers. Mm. Do we, need, we are borrowing to pay salaries. Do we need to borrow to pay more bureaucrats? Mm. That's and the we're using 70% of our, our, our generated point. revenue to, to service to debt. Sense. So Reverend Sally, I want to give you the final word here. You know, with these indices looking at you in the face, with these data, with these figures, with these statistics that are, you know, you can't argue with them. How do you respond to that? How do you believe that this government is going to succeed with this uh, 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 gen income generating crisis that we are fighting and the fact that we have more politicians than technocrats in the, I, in the federal government? I still cabinet? disagree with you that we have more politicians than technocrats. We have people that we develop name, name 10 technocrats. Yes. He mentioned Akpabio. Mm. He mentioned... Uh, the, Is the, Akpabio a technocrat? No, excuse me. Mm. When he was a governor, you know very, very well. Akpabio gave a new first lift to Akpabio State. That is a Under fact. the PDP, right? They are criticized. Uh, uh, no, excuse me. It doesn't really matter. matter as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter under which party. But the issue mm -hmm. is that this is a man who is today a minister. Mm -hmm. And the, if you say something, as you were a, 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 a say or whatever to a minister, right? And you know how the ministerial involve, uh, 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 office is. It's the same thing. It's, going to, it's not going to be different. The minister, involved, uh, the minister in his office is going to make sure that he put the best on the table and then there is a better development. Nigeria must be developed. It's not going to be the same. We have technocrats. We have people that are going to reason very far. Look at our nature. Yes, he was a, 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 a speaker in River State. He was a governor, and he did extremely well. His last year was very bad because of issue with his... Uh, 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 with the former president. That was why I mentioned But you're still mentioning politicians. No, no excuse me. Are you not a politician? No. no. I'm a politician. <laughs> I'm actually not. I think Reverend, a technocrat is someone that has every, developed every, a name for himself in the private sector be, before coming to be become a, a politician. politician. There is a political element in, in us. Mm. We have to face the reality. There is a political element but in us. But where does this put the people? No, but Amitri has done so well even as a minister. Didn't he do well? And he's coming back in the ministry of transport in the rest system and we are talking about people that are also conscious of how they are spending Nigerian money because it's not the issue of being a minister and then you pocket the money or a governor you pocket the money we are talking about those that the poverty the money. increased uh, uh, the, the, no you're talking about the is money it, and not being spent no no no, no. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the system that we are in the, what is the system that's we are why in? they are brought in no 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 the system, the system we are in the system we are in is such a polluted system with corruption that is eating deep. So who fixes deep it, deep by Corruption is deep into your heart in this country, into <laughs> every person's heart in this country. And that is what we've been fighting for. And I believe that this time around, it's not going to be the same. We, we fought corruption for the past two and a half, three years. We are still fighting corruption. But that's not going to stop Mr. President from releasing the uh, uh, appropriated money for every ministry and every government to do so. And when we Reverend keep on Sally, we've, we've I guess, completely Mr. ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> we've completely ran out of time. Thank you so much. I would have loved to give you guys final words, but we have to take the sports segment of the weekend show. Barrister Frank, Frank. Reverend Sally, Ikena, thank, thank you so you much for joining us.